Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host today. This thing in my hand, no, it is not a corn dog, although people said it looked like a corn dog. And you know what? I never thought about it until they mentioned it. I posted a picture of this on my Facebook, and it was right on the shelf, laying like this. And uh, I didn't mention much about it, but somebody said, hey, this looks like a corn dog. And I realized it does. It, <laughs> it looks like one of those state fair corn dogs. But no, it's not a corn dog, although that would be kind of cool. This is called a casa banana. I think that's how it's pronounced. And if it isn't, I really don't care. Uh, this is a tropical fruit or vegetable. I really don't know which. And I think it can be classified as either. And it grows on a long vine. If you check out my Praxis 55712 episodes last season, this thing grew in my garden and it went nuts. It had like this 30 foot long vine with these huge leaves. I couldn't figure out what it was. And uh, it put out these, it put out a couple of these. And one of them, uh, I picked it, I believe in October or at the beginning of November, not really quite sure when, but uh, it didn't ripen in time. So I had to pick it and bring it inside to ripen it. And uh, these things are not supposed to grow in Iowa. This is a tropical fruit and it grows somewhere in South America or Costa Rica or something like that. But anyway, I grew it. I, you know, people tell me what I can't do and I just do it anyway, but I grew it in my garden. I grew it in my garden last year and it didn't quite make it. And I grew it from the very beginning to the very end. And boy, this thing was, this thing was a trooper. It actually handled the first frost. And I took it inside, laid it on the counter and just forgot about it. And it stayed green. By the way, these are green when they're young. And as they ripen, they turn kind of a yellowish color and then a slightly orangish color. And sometimes they'll turn almost a reddish color. But this one only got orangish to orangish red. It's kind of red on the butt and green on the tip and orange in the middle. But uh, up until recently, it had no smell to it. And now that I sniff its butt, which I normally don't do, um, it smells like an apple. And I'm thinking that that is an indication that it's time to uh, slice into it. And if not, boy, this is going to be a huge mess. But I wanted to slice into it and I wanted to bring you along too because this thing has been with me for so long I, and, and for you for so long. I thought, ah, what the heck, let's slice into it together. And I also wanted to show you a couple plants. But before I slice into this, I want to show you a few things that are going on. Because the voodoo garden does continue, whether it's outdoor growing, uh, things are going on in my life, the voodoo garden continues. And it's really been doing some weird stuff lately. Uh, recently, I think on the last episode, a couple weeks ago, I took out all the pepper and tomato plants. It was kind of a sad, bittersweet type of thing. It was kind of sad because I was losing them out of the voodoo garden, but it was kind of nice that I was taking them outside and they were going to grow in, in, in my garden. But I was making room for all of the other stuff, the tropicals I call them. Some of them aren't really so tropical, but uh, they're beauties. And recently I've discovered the miracle that is rooting powder. And uh, it's something that a lot of people use, but I've never used it before. I thought, ah, I don't need it. But you know what? It's a wonderful thing. I had a coleus. And for those of you who don't know what a coleus is, it's this. You normally see them in garden centers. They have colorful leaves. They can be purple, yellow, green, any color of the rainbow and a few colors that aren't in the rainbow. And they're beautiful foliage plants that you normally grow on your porch, outside in your garden. And they're just for looks. And, uh, and they're just for leaves because the flowers are very unremarkable. So um, I was growing one of these inside and uh, it was in this big pot. And it kind of got, I don't know, kind of wonky and it didn't look very good. And my soil, I was having problems with my soil. And I thought, eh, I'm going to just throw it out. Well, instead of throwing it out, what I did was, well, I did throw it out. I took the plant, took a cutting of a little tiny piece, and I threw it in one of my cups, my uh, famous little uh, solo cups. And I used rooting powder. And I used brand new soil. And uh, look. This thing went crazy. It would be, I'm going to give you a close-up look, but I just wanted you to see from a distance. This thing went nuts, and it's growing these huge, beautiful leaves. And also, at the same time, I took a cutting of, uh, oh, not this, but this. This is called a Persian shield. And a Persian shield is known for its leaves. Uh, it does have flowers, but it's known for its leaves. And these leaves are stunning. I showed uh, the mother plant of this a long time ago and it was a beauty, but it started going downhill too. You know what? Uh, the voodoo garden is not perfect. It's just like anybody else's uh, grow room. Things happen, things good, things bad, things really, really strange happen in the voodoo garden. And uh, that's why I say all things are possible and all things have happened in here. But anyway, the mother plant started looking really crappy, losing her color, her leaves were crinkling up. I tossed her out too, but not before I lopped her head off used rooting powder and put that in here. 
And I also had, uh, I bought this itty bitty, um, uh, what is it called, gynura or cascading velvet or purple velvet plant. And uh, I transplanted it, but before I transplanted it, I did something I've never done before. I, I took the, the little pot that it came in, is this itty bitty pot, and I took it out and I dusted it with rooting hormone. And you don't have to do that, but I did it anyway. And I put it in a bigger pot and this thing went nuts. These things will vine out up to like 20 feet, I think, yeah. And they have the most beautiful shade of purple if you take good care of them. They have flowers, but the flowers, they smell like sadness. And they're itty bitty, they're ugly. If you ever have flowers on these things, pinch them off and it'll promote more growth. Last thing that I'm gonna be talking about uh, is this. This is called a pregnant onion. And a pregnant onion is this little bulbous looking thing that you grow in a pot. It grows these leaves and it's supposed to grow upright, but mine is a little bit challenged and it decided to grow sideways. And I'm not gonna argue with my plants. I just do what they tell me to do. So this thing decided she wants to grow sideways. And I thought, okay, if you wanna grow sideways, we'll do that. We put it on her shelf and she grew sideways. And then she put out this stalk. And this is where I'm bringing you in for a close-up because you gotta see all of these things up close. I just wanted to give you the framework before you see these things, okay? Take a look at what, what Miss Pregnant Onion is doing right now. This is called a pregnant onion, and for good reason. Uh, it starts out as this itty bitty bulb, and that's what happened. A friend, a viewer, sent me a, a few itty bitty bulbs, and they look like this. See this little bulb over here? Yeah, she sent me a whole bunch of these little ones, and I planted one per pot. Well, one of them did better than the other, so I only kept one, because I really don't have room for everything. And what it did was it got bigger. And I think the reason they call it a, an onion, even though this is not a regular onion, it just looks like an onion. It's not, I don't think it's an onion. But anyway, it peels off like an onion. But uh, babies start forming like bulbs on the side of her. Look at that. Yep. And they eventually get so big, they just cleave off. I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand here. They cleave off, lay down, and form a little shoot at the top. And then they put out roots, I believe. So we're going to have more babies all over the place. And that's why they call it a pregnant onion. And uh, that's kind of fun in itself, okay? But what, uh, what it does is it puts out these leaves, and I think it's supposed to grow up right, but this one didn't. And uh, that was fine. But then what this thing did was it started putting out a stem, like, a, like an onion uh, second year in the garden. It put out a stem, it grew down, it hit the table, and then it started growing sideways. And let me move over here to the end for you. The end formed this most amazing flower head and it really is something to behold look at that is that beautiful or what each one of these little things in sequence it starts at the base here and then it works its way over and it starts putting out flowers and the flowers smell pretty good too and it looks like there's going to be an endless stream of flowers kind of like a snapdragon in a way but uh in the meantime it's looking just beautiful. You really get a lot of bang for your buck with the pregnant onion. That is quite the beauty. I don't know if these are going to do any seeds. I've been pollinating them, but I don't see any seeds forming on them. But even if, even if it doesn't, I have a beautiful flower. It has little tiny bulbats coming off the side. I don't need any seeds. And this, up close, is what's called a Persian shield. This is not color enhanced. There is no photo magic going on in here. This is what the plant looks like, folks. It is this stunning, iridescent, glowing purple. That's what the leaves look like. Yep, it is a beauty, just a striking beauty. And this is just a baby. You can imagine what this thing looks like when it turns into this huge, leafy plant. That's gonna. These can grow outside. These can grow inside. This one's only been uh, grown inside. It's never seen outside. But it's called a Persian shield. If you ever see one at a garden center, snatch it up. Oh, you're gonna love growing this thing. And this one's a beauty in its own right. This is a common coleus. And uh, coleus are an old fashioned plant, but they're just beautiful. They're, their leaves have the texture and the look of velvet. And they come in so many different colors and they're so easy to grow. One thing that I love about them, they respond extremely well to pinching the top. You can actually cut the top off, you know, like I do with tomatoes. It'll grow side stems and you can get it bushier and bushier and they respond well to rooting. You can cut off a tip, put it in water or in soil and you can grow another plant. So you can grow more and more plants as this thing goes and they get huge. You can grow them year round inside or you can grow them during the summer outside. 
This last one over here has been one of my favorites for many, many years. And uh, the reason, other than the color, the reason it is one of my favorites, other than just the striking color and the leaf structure, look at that. It's beautiful. You look at it and it's green. You turn it sideways and it's purple. It has an iridescence that is just something, you gotta see it in real life to get the true effect of this thing. They grow fast, they vine down, or they'll vine up. You can grow them any way you want. They respond extremely well to pinching back. You'll get all kinds of new growth and they will grow forever. They're very easy to grow. But uh, the reason that this is special for me is because I gave, this was the first plant I ever bought in my life and I gave it to my mom for her birthday as a little plant and I put it in a hanging planter and she grew it and grew it and grew it and it turned into this big cascading thing from a hanging planter. It hit the ground and it kept on vining and she loved that thing for the longest time and it brought so much joy to my mom it became one of my favorites as well because it reminds me of my mom and that's why I like to grow it. It's called a cascading velvet or a purple velvet plant or a gynura. That's the Latin name, Gynura. And you can usually find these in garden centers in the spring. Oh, by the way, um, right above my head uh, from the table, you see this thing. And uh, people call this an African mask plant. And look at the leaves. Is that something else? They're striking. Just the color alone and the texture. They look fake, but they're not. I got this one as a smaller plant, but uh, although it is beautiful, I wanted to show you something inside. I, I didn't know it was going to do this. Things keep happening. <laughs> I have no idea why, but look at this. This is a flower. I believe this is a flower stock that this thing is putting out. And uh, so possibly on the next episode, you're going to see a flower on this thing. And um, the plant, look at that. Is that something else? That is a beauty. Uh, it is a striking plant, and with a flower, I think it is going to be a huge bonus for this thing. So hopefully on the next episode, tune in. We'll see what this flower looks like. So it smells like these flowers. It smells green. It smells like apple butt. It smells wonderful in the voodoo garden today. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to slice into this. And you know what? I didn't look it up online. I don't like to do that. I like to kind of wing it and, and just fly by the seat of my pants. I have no idea how I'm supposed to cut into this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it watermelon style. I'm going to just take it long ways and I don't know what if it's a tough skin or a thin skin. So I took my boning knife. I use this for slicing fish and meat and stuff, but it's the toughest knife I have and the sharpest knife I have. I want to just gut this thing right down the center and we're going to see what's going on inside because I really would like to save these seeds and grow them again. It's a little too late in, uh, uh, in this season to grow it, but possibly next season I can uh, donate a small portion of space in my sunny raised bed garden and plant it very, very early. And maybe with full sun and an early start, I can grow these things from start to finish and get even more fruit on them. That would be kind of fun. Okay. Anyway, let's slice into it and see what we got. Yikes. Okay. Well, I was right. It does have a thick skin. So this may... <laughs> You're just dying for this thing to blow up on me. I have no idea if this thing is ripe or not. I really don't know. And I have no idea what it tastes like either. People said, Ray, you're going to love them. And some people said, eh, maybe you will, maybe you won't. So I really don't know what to expect. You know, some people said I would like durian. And I didn't like durian. But uh, I would love to grow it. But then again, you know, durian's not going to grow here. But you know what? This thing is starting to smell worse and worse as I slice into it. So I don't know if, the, <laughs> if that means it's rotten or if it's ripe. I have no idea, but you know what? Like I said, we're going to find out to, oh, together. Oh. Okay. It doesn't smell rotten. Okay. I, I guess I was wrong. Uh, it's just a different smell to me. And people were saying that about durian. They said, oh, once you get to, to know it, you're going to love it. And I told them, well, I don't want to get to know it. But you know what? This thing is bubbling. So I don't know whether it's fermenting or not. And by the way, I didn't say I was going to taste this. I said I was going to slice into it. Okay. And um, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable eating something 
that is bubbling, you know, naturally. I mean, I didn't ferment this, so it could be fermenting in there. Maybe that's what I was smelling. So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Although it, it did smell good before I opened it up, uh, it doesn't, it, I don't feel comfortable eating this, and I'm not going to do something I don't feel comfortable doing. But, you know what I do feel comfortable doing is looking through here to see if any of these seeds are uh, worth saving. See, I don't know. I don't remember what the seeds looked like uh, that I planted for this thing. I thought they were bigger. You know, these things actually look kind of tiny. I wonder if they're, they're viable seeds or not. I thought they were supposed to be bigger. See, that's the thing. Maybe I just grew... Ooh, it does smell fermented. Holy cow. I think I made wine. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not eating that. I can't, <laughs> I can't be getting drunk here on camera. But here are the seeds. This is what they look like. And this is what the flesh looks like, folks. People say that it will taste kind of uh, like a, uh, it's kind of like a cucumber uh, or a cucurbit earlier in the season, but when it ripens, it's more like a fruit. Okay, to me, it's more like uh, a durian or a jackfruit. Yeah. So there's a, a cross. And uh, this is kind of nice. And you know what? This is not just some fruit somebody sent me. Uh, although I did appreciate them sending me the fruit. Oh, wow. I'm getting high off the fumes here. <laughs> this is something I grew from seed, and I'm very, very happy about it. I'm going to take these seeds and see if I can dry them and see if they don't rot and uh, see if they're good. And hopefully next year, it's too late this year, but next year I might be able to grow one of these. So here it is, folks, the Leviathan, also known as Casa Banana. Oh, oh. <laughs> the longer I smell this, the more I think, oh gosh, no, no. Oh, it's starting to reek in here. Okay, it's one of those smells that kind of grows on you. And I don't believe it's because of the fruit itself. I, I got to believe it's because this thing is <laughs> fermenting right before my very eyes. Oh, yeah, I got to get rid of this. Yeah, this is, this is awful. It's probably flammable. Anyway, that's it. That's the cutting of the Casa Banana. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoy my little show and tell with the plants coming on. Um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. The flower. The flower. Hopefully, this thing will be in full bloom. And by the way, over there, I don't know if you can see it. Remember the passion fruit, the one that was peeing on my head? Yep, I cut it back, but it's coming back. I'm going to be showing a few other things on next episode, so tune in. Tune in to the next Voodoo Garden episode. We're going to explore a little bit more, but for right now, i got to clean up this mess. It's getting sticky and stinky. But anyway, thank you for joining me on the Voodoo Garden. I really do appreciate it. Until next week, or next two weeks. Two weeks from now. <laughs> two weeks from now. This is Ray and his stinky fermenting mess. We are out of here. Okay, without further ado. Oh, you got to go. You got to. No. No. Bad dog. You got to get out of my room. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host today. And um, the Leviathan, the Leviathan that I've had in the Voodoo Garden for, I don't know, forever. I don't. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host today. And um, today I have a knife, cutting board, and I have the Leviathan because it's time to put this poor thing out of my misery. I've been wanting to cut into this thing since the day I saw it on the vine because I'm just curious. I'm a curious kind of guy. And uh, why are you doing this? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host today. We're going to be slicing into this uh, big, fruity smelling thing I call the Leviathan. I thought I. It was. <laughs> Yes, they will grow and they will kind of uh, cleave off kind of like a shallot. Hey, look, a fungus net. Uh, hey, look, a dead fungus net. Uh, uh. Murder on video. Hopefully they don't remove this from YouTube. Yep, I killed a fungus net. But <laughs> back to the plant. 